My name's Dan Bennett. I'm based in the UK. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I've been a software tester for about 16, 17 years. So, uh, has anyone here in the room identified as a tester? One, two, three, four, five, great. Six, done, check, check. Awesome. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't like code, it doesn't mean that we don't do things that support developers and help developers. And most of you are developers, I imagine. I'm, afraid, uh, there's, I'm sure lots of other kinds of people here. Um, and I've been testing for a long time, mostly in the southwest of England, but recently in London. And for the last three or four years, I've been cross-training myself in security. Uh, so learning web application security, web application ethical hacking, and things like that to diversify my skill set, to make myself more marketable as a tester as an employee, as someone that's attractive to business around the world. So, again, that's a little bit about me. So, I think we have a problem. And that our applications and systems are being hacked. And they're being hacked all the time, as we see right now, regardless of whether you're a, uh, a business building software, or a financial institution, or a global communications network. They're all under attack, every single one of them. And they're, all, they're under attack from different sources. So it could be geopolitical, it could be um, uh, people trying to have fun, it could be uh, people trying to make a, uh, a social point about the open web and things like that. There's all sorts of reasons why people do hacking. I'm not going to delve deeply into those because it's not the reason why I'm speaking to you. These are a list of the people or companies in 2015 that were hacked. Quite significant for the UK was TalkTalk Talk and Carpet Warehouse. They're a little bit like Orange, they're large providers of mobile phone, TV, and internet in the UK. And they had their entire de customer database dropped and stolen by uh, teenage boys, mostly. Uh, uh, Sanya Rowe, who made Hello Kitty. Can anyone here a fan of Hello Kitty? Good lad, and uh, lady. Nice one to check on there, admitting he likes Hello Kitty. That's very cool. Um, and uh, these ones in particular became very famous. Uh, Ashley Madison. Can you hear an Ashley Madison account holder? <laughs> no, that one isn't. This is going to put his hand up. <laughs> um, and Adult Friend Finder, very similar. And VTech, who were familiar in 2015, was perhaps the most scary. Uh, anyone here heard of VTech or got VTech products in their home for their children? Yeah, some of you. Okay, so VTech make children's electronic toys. They have a lot of old infrastructure supporting those toys. And when you log into one of those toys, you log in with a parent's user right name and ID, and you log in with a child's user name and ID, and they're linked together. However, there was a SQL injection attack which stole all the parent data, and with an insecure database was able to steal all the children's data and sell it on the dark web. Imagine your children's photographs for sale on the web through something like that. So I'm going to progress through to last year. Uh, LinkedIn and MySpace both had uh, historic acts revealed back in 2012. Uh, even earlier in MySpace's case. Okay, Dropbox had a major hack last year. There were rumours that there was hacking around Brexit um, in terms of uh, influencing voters and how the voters used to do that. And GameStop was hacked, which is a major games retailer in the US, and we know for certain now that there was hacking involved in the US election last year. So the influence of hacking and hackers has a lot of impact on the world. And as recent as last week, uh, the new French president was hacked, or an intended hack against him, to influence the votes against him. So, to encourage people to vote for Marine Le Pen. However, he got around that and he's now president of France. So, well done, the ethical hackers and pen testers of France. So, testers and testing can help. 
Whether your testers yourself or your developers doing your own testing, I don't mind. But testing can help you. Security should be part of the conversation we have when we build applications. How many here have discussions with the rest of their team? Three amigos, for example, and things like that? How often do you guys talk about security in those meetings? Roughly? One guy there, one at the back, one or two in the side here, lady in the middle there, lady in the back, and the back here. Okay. Not very many of you, and the gentleman there in the hoodie. Not very many of you. We should be driving security through those conversations, understanding what security means for our businesses, understanding the risk and the impact to our businesses, and our customers, and our stakeholders. And our stakeholders are not just the senior management of our com com uh, companies, it's shareholders, it's reputation, people whose reputation is at stake. So the CIO, the CEO, people who, the, the CFO, people who handle that information, the auditors that come in. There's a lot of different relationships with regards to security in the data. And if you get hacked and you lose customer's data, your reputation will suffer and you will lose money. And in some cases, in extreme cases, those companies will go out of business. Or, as we've seen, Global events are influenced, such as through government elections. We need to learn from the hackers. Hackers like you and I build tools to help other people or themselves. They build their own tools, they learn faster than we do, they understand systems and architecture better than we do because it's all they ever do. So some of you might be Java developers, some of you might be C-sharp developers, some of you might be JavaScript, script, uh, JavaScript developers, some of you might be uh, web testers, some of you might be uh, database testers, or whatever it might be. But they live and breathe this stuff 24-7. And they do not stop because they know that they can make money from it and it's easy to use. Okay? So this lady is Karen Elazari, she's uh, Israeli, and she gave a TED talk in 2014, which I highly recommend you watch. It's fantastic. Has anybody heard of her before? A few of you. Okay, so she said hackers, they just might be the immune system for the information age. Sometimes they make us sick, and they make us fix it. Which means they are telling us where we have problems. So when you're sick, you get a cold, you get sore throats, might have the shivers, you go and see your doctor, they say, hey, you've got flu. You don't need a doctor to tell you you've got the flu. You just use the symptoms of your application to tell you that there's a problem. What's going on in your application can lead to hackers finding information about your sites, about your applications, and using that information to exploit your systems. Uh, she talks about going to watch a film in the 90s. Anyone who came in early would know I'm a big film and TV fan because I had spy music playing the whole time you were coming in from like Bond movies and porn movies and things. And uh, she went to see a film called Hackers in about 1995 with Angelina Jolie. Has anyone seen this movie? A few of you. I saw that film on a date with a girl called Nicola. She had red hair, she was beautiful. And I was 19 years old, and um, she was great, and the film was awesome. And I've only seen the film twice since that day. Uh, but this is a great film, and I record a podcast with my friend Neil in the UK called Screen Testing, where we talk about films and we talk about all the tech stuff that goes on in it. And that was coming out in a few weeks' time, so please listen to it. Oh, there's a logo at the end. Um, and she watched that film and said, Oh, I'd really love to be a hacker. I really want to get into hacking, and she spent her time avoiding bombs and stuff, and all the stuff going on in Gaza and in Jerusalem and in Tel Aviv, um, by learning ethical hacking and using that to forge her career. And she's a little bit younger than me, uh, but and she's doing TED Talks. Brilliant stuff. She's just fantastic. Lots of this. Uh, so, my testing context. I work in the life sciences industry, I work for a company called Medidata, 
They make clinical trial software for um, universities, hospitals, any pharmacological company that wants to do research on a drug or a uh, new piece of technology to support people who are ill. So, for example, new drugs for cancer, equipment to treat people, that kind of thing. Uh, so we handle a lot of medical data of the hospitals and patient data. We also handle intellectual property, our own property, and also that of the people who use our systems for clinical trials. And it's cloud hosted. We have a, a suite of legacy and new platforms, and it's heavily regulated. So if you look through that list, can you imagine the kinds of problems that we might have with security? Especially around the data area. And also integration of new and old platforms, because that's where a lot of issues happen. Where we have old platforms integrating with new, and the old platforms built on old security models and things like that, and it has a backdoor into the new system. Or it's got an open API that can be exploited or anything like that. So here are some questions and things you might hear from project managers or um, uh, BAs or people that drive the project or people that aren't in technology. Why do we need to do security testing? Perhaps they don't understand why it's important. Whether you're doing it yourselves or whether it's a tester doing it or whether you're buying people from outside to come in and help you. There are things that we can do Grab the low hanging fruit when you're doing code reviews, when you're doing uh, pairing with a tester to look at how the code behaves and understanding it from a security context as well as a functional context or a performance context. There's all sorts of different ways you can think about it. That's out of scope. You might hear that from a BA as well or a PM or something. No, we haven't got time to do that. So we'll do it at the end of the project when it's delivered. It's too bloody late. We're outsourcing that, and that's perfectly fine. You might not have the skills in-house, so you might have to hire a specialist, a penetration tester from outside the business, or a consultancy to help you do that. And I'm sure there's plenty of those in Romania. I know there's plenty of those across Europe. There's quite a few in the UK. There's a ton in the States that I work with. That's a non-functional requirement. Do you know I hate those words? You wouldn't believe how many times I've heard that's a non-functional requirement, we don't need to worry about it. We have two, we have a word in the UK, and the first word is the name for a male cow, and the second word is, well, comes out of my box. And I would say that word at that point. We don't have the skills. That's awful. We, we of course have the skills. JavaScript developers, how many of you in the room? Okay, you can all do process scripting. Database developers, well, anyone who writes database code or calls the database from their code? I would have thought it would be every one of you. You can all do SQL injection. Um, anyone here on web developer? You can all look at the headers and response and request headers in your application. All of you. You do have the skills, you just probably either don't know it or don't utilize them very often. You know how to use your eyes and look to see, oh, look, there's a problem. This is something you might hear from modern sort of agile delivery and things like that. We need to deliver fast and not slow things down. Well, the key to that is, is incorporating security into your definition of done, if you use that term. Include it in your day-to-day -day work so it becomes a natural part of your delivery rather than a nice to have at the end. And then it isn't slowing things down, it's just part of what you're delivering. Now I'm no agile expert, I work in agile teams, I work in waterfall teams, I work in all sorts of different um, you know, uh, development cultures. But every single time, until recently, we've had people telling us that we need to deliver quickly and not slow things down. So I'm going to flip this around and make this a bit more positive. I think we need to do some security testing. You spotted this in a, in a talk with developers and testers or whoever, and you need to hear these words, scream, cheer, and shake that person's hand. 
Where do you start? Great question. There's lots of ways you can start on a web application. Just need to press F12 on your PC. F12. On a Mac, it's slightly more complicated, but of course, Mac. Yeah? <coughs> How do we do it? Well, I've already given you one clue. Just look under the hood. And there are lots of other ways you can start with security issues. We need some training. That's easy. I run workshops. So do a lot of other people. I'll come here and run a workshop next year. Who wants a security testing workshop here next year? Some of you. <laughs> well, we'll study on. Uh, uh, there are lots of other people out there. Who's heard of the Australian guy, Troy Hunt? Yeah. Do his workshops on plural side. They're brilliant. Seriously good. What tools do we need? Well, we'll talk about some of those in a minute. There are developer tools, there are proxy tools. There are uh, scanners, there are uh, form fuzzers, there are uh, tampering tools, all sorts of things. How do we know if we are secure? Unfortunately, you are never 100% secure. Unfortunately. Only as good as you can be at that particular time on what you know and what you've learned from the testing that you've done. Whoever drives that testing. So, here's some tips, 10 tips, and we're going to look at some tools and other bits and pieces. So consider the scope. My first tip, consider the scope. So we have a, a model for an application here. We've got a functional flow. You might register as a user, you might search for a product, and you might get results from that search. You might then purchase that product, and then that product gets come to the stop control, and you might also have some user administration around that. And you know, there are all sorts of flows around that. And think about how you might test the registration page, how you might check security test the search page, how you might security test the results page. So for a registration page, could you do, for example, an escalation of privilege? Could you create a user that's uh, got no rights and escalate them to be an administrator at some point? Could you, in the search, do some cross-site scripting or some SQL injection? Could you, um, in the results, tamper them so that your products come to the top of the line rather than someone else's products? In the purchasing, could you steal someone's um, card information or PayPal credentials or something like that? Can you amend the stock so that there's no count of that particular product left? You know, can you make it look like there's none left or steal them or something like that? And can you breach straight from registration to admin without even thinking? Can you get to that without even doing any of this? Potentially you could. That's the functional flow. Let's think about user flow. You have unregistered users that can do any of this without, uh, they can do a search or results without, you know, being registered. Registered users should be able to do purchase stock control and user admin, and then you've got user administrators who would handle the stock control and user admin area. You know, think about your user levels. Who's doing what and who's allowed to do what and what they're allowed to do when they're in there. And can they go up or down or sideways in that set of permissions that they have available to them? Think about that. Those are the kinds of questions you'd be asking when you look at the scope of your security testing. Now, I use a lot of mind maps. You might use a threat diagram or a threat tree. Uh, threat modeling is a very good technique to do this. You need to decompose your applications, understand what the components are, and understand the vulnerabilities in those components. So, know your stack. If you're developers, you guys need to understand what your, you know, where you sit inside that stack. If you're a JavaScript developer, how do you fit into the overall scheme of things? How that fits into, you know, what database layers do you have? What um, web servers do you have supporting the application? All of these different things have problems. So, all components have potential vulnerabilities. Every single one of them. No matter how modern it is, no matter how well developed it is, they all have issues which can be exploited by a hacker. Poor implementations of any component can lead to flaws. So no matter how good those components are, if you implement them incorrectly, you've got a great API um, allowing you to do a lot of interesting stuff. 
like um, Romeo was doing earlier. But if that data is private and it's exposed to the web and people can hack it and steal that information, well, it's not great. And you need deep knowledge of your environment which will aid your testing. Okay? So it means that being what they like to call these days full stack, but quite often we do have specialists which you can call on if you don't know everything about it. So as a team, it's important that you have that intimate knowledge. You can rely on specialisms, that's fine. Understand your witnesses. Our friend the armadillo here, he is prey to things like mountain lions and uh, eagles, that kind of thing. So when Mr. Armadillo comes across a danger, what does he do? Tucks himself into a ball. Because the underside of his body is soft and fleshy, and the outside of his body is hard, like armour. Okay? So, it's harder for people to catch him. So we need to understand what the soft belly parts of our application is. Understand where we can prod and poke to get under it. And where the best bits of our protection are. Is it on our back? Should it be on our front? You know. So from that point of view, is our web front end insecure? Is any of our APIs insecure? Understand where our weaknesses are and then you can plug them. Yeah? Power up. And by that I mean powering up your skills. And now, that's quite a challenge really, because I found that a lot of testers don't know a lot about security, so I built a vulnerable app to help them with that. So I can help train testers on how to do security testing. Um, anyone who's here earlier could have got the URL, but I built something called Ticket Magpie. It's a Java application, it runs locally using Maven, and it can run from the cloud using Docker. And I welcome you to go there and play with it, fork it, uh, learn yourself from it, uh, contribute if you want to. Because it's a fairly basic application, but it just shows some of the key, app, key vulnerabilities that you might expect in a modern web app, or even an old one. Uh, so, Ticket Mag, do you have magpies in Romania? We have them all over the UK. They like stealing shiny objects in me. So, uh, go on, hack me, I dare you. So, let's show you a little bit of that. Uh, right. This is Ticket Magpie. It's basically a site where you can go and buy uh, music tickets. So it has a registration page, has a login page. I'm not going to go too far into this because I simply don't have time. But let's just demonstrate at least one vulnerability. All I need to do is put one character in the field. Yeah? Woo! What's that? Let's have a look. Unable to log in. Error when searching for user. Statement callback. Bad SQL grammar. So let's start from users, where username equals a quote mark and password is blank. Nested exception, blah, 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 mouthful, small form, string, and password. Now, what has that told you about my application? <laughs> Everything. What has it told? Please tell me. What, what, what can you get from that error message? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this is. So, yeah. So um, we have four error handling here for a start. We're also building our queries incorrectly. You know. Anything else? What else can you tell me? Yeah. Hey, good lad. Right. Okay. Plaintext passwords. Anything else? Terrible error messages, yeah. Anything else you can see? Yep. <laughs> okay. I've been told I've got five minutes, so I'll crack on. Uh, right, let's go back to the slides. Use tools effectively. Now, uh, I use Carly. Anyone here use Carly? One, two, three. More of you, please use Carly. 
Uh, I'll use those attack proxy. Anyone here use those attack proxy? One. I need to talk to this gentleman. Uh, I'll show you that if anyone wants to come and do a set attack proxy session with me in the open space, then you're very welcome to do so. Uh, I use SQL map. Anyone here use SQL map? One or two. Okay. Um, and this is a strategy that I use to run my testing. I scan the application. I verify any false positives and remove them from my scan. I then explore the application to find vulnerabilities around the scan results. I occasionally need evil. Anyone recognise any of the villains in this cut in the screen? Can anyone name one gentleman there in a grey shirt? What villain can you name? Hannibal Lecter. Yeah. Anyone else got one? Got, it's not Doctor Evil. It's a Stavro Blofeld. But <laughs> huh? Gorilla the Bill. Yeah. Okay. We, have you noticed something about these villains? They're all played by, well, pretty much all played by British actors. <laughs> so, as a hacker, this is user story. You can flip the user stories to turn them into evil user stories. As a hacker, I can send that data in URLs, so I can access data and functions which are not authorised. There are lots of evil user stories you can use, and they're all from OWASP. Anyone here go to OWASP chat meetings or anything like that? Please, more of you go to your local so OWASP chat meeting. Don't do it alone. Pair with someone. Pair with another developer. If you have a tester in the room, pair with them. Also, it helps me focus and defocus because if I do a lot of security testing on my own, I get really depressed. <laughs> because it, feel, it makes me feel sad for the world. And I don't like feeling sad. And I like to pair. This is Gemma. I used to work with Gemma at New Voice Media in the UK. I used to pair with her all the time. Uh, we used to do stuff all together on her. She worked on a bit to do with call handling. So we used to intercept calls and try and hack them. And this is Troy Hunt, who I've paired with and worked with. So pairing with an expert or pairing with someone who's not an expert helps you transfer the learning. Be clear and be heard. It's really hard to share security stories, share security learning, because not everybody understands it. So be clear when you're talking about security problems. Don't expect everybody to know what you know. And be determined, because it's really hard work. Okay? So, I've got a couple of minutes, so I just want to have some fun before we go. Okay. So, let's have some fun. This is the speakers page for... Uh, our, uh, well, it's Eventrix, or Mosaic Works, okay? So, I have a bit of code here.
it sometimes uses this tool, which is called Security Headers IO. Uh, it's made by Scott Helm, a UK guy. If you try and run that against this site, it won't happen. Because he has something called Content Security Policy enabled, which itech.com or confidence.com doesn't have. Um, but they're not the only ones. I know I've only got a few seconds left, but uh, Mosaic works, sorry. Uh, Eventrix, sorry. Uh, Orange, not bad, Orange, well done. Uh, Amazon, BBC, uh, Romanian government, <laughs> and the European Commission. Uh, oh, also, a slight, this is the Ashley Madison passwords that we've done. Okay, so have fun with that, guys. Uh, so, summary. Consider the scope. Know your stack. Understand your weaknesses. Power up your skills. Use tools effectively. Scan, verify, explore. Be occasionally evil. Don't do it alone. Be clearly heard. Be determined. Many thanks this week to people that have helped me with setting up my project because it wasn't working yesterday. Uh, Joe in the room, thank you. Claudia and Bianca in the room. Alistair in the room. And my friend Jessica from the United States. Many thanks. So that's also very good from OWASP. So um, I can send you a link to the uh, Pluralsight training. It's on my GitHub page. I've got another GitHub page which has my security learning on it. And I can share that with you later. Yes, please. No problem. Thanks.
Oh, where else? Oh, God. Should we? They're already familiar. Yeah, a few. A few. That's when I started getting more interested because it just wasn't in the documentation. Anyone else before we wrap up? Okay, thank you very much.